My first guest today is in his third season on the PGA Tour. He's competing at the Mexico Open at Vedanta this week. And that is great news for Brandon Wu because nowhere else on the PGA Tour has he played better than in Mexico at this event, finishing second and third the last couple of years. Brandon, you just had a pro-am and a press conference as well. How's the week going there for you so far? Yeah, it's been great to be back, to be honest. I really enjoy the golf course. The people are awesome and super accommodating and super nice here down at Vedanta. And uh, yeah, it's been a fun week. We've had beautiful weather as well, which doesn't hurt after a rainy and cold West Coast swing. I'm sure you were asked um, in your press conference and when you chatted with Golf Channel earlier about your success rate here. I mean, can you explain it? Can you put it into words? Yeah, I, I guess I've thought about it a little bit over the years. And um, I feel like the past, it's definitely been pretty windy around here and I think my game lends well into the wind I hit it a little bit flatter um, and I can usually control my ball pretty well with my irons in the wind um, so I usually like playing in the wind and then I think the past palm surface I think I've putted well just the greens are at a make makeable speed and I feel really comfortable on them and uh, I guess I've just read them pretty well over the past couple of years so hoping to keep that up I have very little doubt uh, based on what we've seen the last couple of years. How about this season so far? You're playing your fourth event, Brandon, at a top 20 at Wildlife Country Club in Honolulu, 89th in the FedEx Cup points race. Uh, how is the early phase of this season gone for you? Where is the state of your game right now? Yeah, you know, I feel like it's, it's close. It hasn't gone quite as well as I would have liked. It was definitely a nice finish um, at the Sony Open, so that was good. And then I think I missed the cut in Palm Springs and at the Phoenix Open just by a couple shots. So... I don't feel like I'm far off, but I think I could, you know, hope to improve a little bit on those finishes. I mentioned this is your third season out here. I'm wondering about the evolution of your game and the progression of your game. And really more than that, your comfort level, because sometimes the transition from the Corn Ferry Tour to the PGA Tour, it's a short step, but it's a big step, right? I mean, what has been the comfort level for you from year one to year two to now in your third full season out here? Yeah, I think it's definitely increased. I feel like I've gotten a little bit better um, in certain areas of my game, like my short game and my iron play over my last three seasons. Um, so, yeah, I think that's the biggest goal every year is just to get a little bit better. And I will say, like, although you are comfortable, I think you can never get too comfortable because it's pretty cutthroat out on the PGA Tour. And, you know, you're only guaranteed this year, right? So you got to go out and play well every year. And I think that's, that's good because it keeps up the competitiveness on tour. There's so much information available to players, um, which offers sort of a pathway to improvement, right? And I feel like if you're digging into data and analytics, and you might have someone on your team who's responsible just for that, Brandon, uh, you can identify the areas where you need improvement. I also think you players are inherently in tune with your game, so there's some of that as well. Is it kind of a blend of art and science with you in that space? Yeah, for sure. I think you have a good sense of what you're doing well and what you're not doing well week to week. And, but I think the data, like you said, I do have someone who helps me look through the data and comb through and see what we're missing. And uh, yeah, I think like taking larger sample sizes of that and you can kind of see trends like what's it like after a week off versus playing three weeks in a row. Like what are your tendencies there or, um, you know, where are you lacking on your putting? Is it six feet? Is it 10 feet? Is it 12 feet? And I think the most helpful part of that is just be able to structure your practice a little bit more efficiently. You know, okay, these are kind of the key areas for this course this week. This is what you've been struggling the last few weeks, and this is what you've been doing well. So I would pay a little bit more attention to that this week. It's interesting to hear you say that because you played a very heavy schedule last year, uh, 35 events, I want to say. And I'm wondering if that was just because you're young and healthy and you'd be playing golf and you're off weeks anyway, so you might as well make some money while you're doing it, right? <laughs> Yeah, I think, you know, you can't really make money sitting at home. So, yeah, I, I like to get out there and play. And I feel like I'm always grateful to be a member of the PGA Tour and to be able to play these tournaments. So it's sometimes hard skipping weeks and turning down the opportunity to play. And, uh, yeah, so I like to go out and, and try to play. Are you a goal setter, either micro or macro, week to week, season to season? What does that look like for you? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's great to have goals, something to work towards, something to aspire to. I like to set sort of season long goals. Like I think in my first couple of years, my goal has been to win and I haven't quite gotten there yet. But I think it's good to have goals that are, you know, feel like they're just just out of reach and something to just keep pushing you. Winning is so difficult, right? To get across the line late on a PGA Tour Sunday and 
the more you want it, sometimes the more challenging it becomes, right? Have you identified anything in particular, Brandon, that might push you through that threshold? Yeah, I think, you know, I trust that if I just keep developing and keep getting a little bit better every year, I think I'll become closer and closer. So I think on a smaller scale, that's mostly what I've been focused on. And I feel like I have been able to do that every year that I've been a professional. And I think in college too, I felt like my scoring average got a little bit better every year, which I was actually really proud of. And I think if I can just continue to sort of, you know, chase that carrot right in front of me, uh, eventually I'll get hit my goals. Well, your collegiate career was celebrated at Stanford All-America all four years in Palo Alto. And of course, you were part of the Cardinal National Championship winning team your senior year, along with uh, Isaiah Salinda and some of the other uh, close friends and colleagues and teammates of yours at the time. I remember Tom Watson, Tiger Woods uh, gave you guys shout outs on their social channels after winning. That must have been pretty cool. Yeah, I think another really interesting story was Nota Begay was the on-course reporter following my group uh, during the championship match. So, uh, you know, actually my match had finished, but our team was still going. Um, but he was standing right next to me, uh, about to interview me for me winning my match when he's like, hey, you guys just won. <laughs> so that was pretty special hearing it straight from him. And uh, yeah, that was a special moment for us. I'm sure you were highly recruited uh, at the tail end of your high school career. How much I wonder, did the allure of Tiger's presence and aura at Stanford lead you to sign with the Cardinal? Yeah, obviously, I think, you know, anyone can try to fall into Tiger's footsteps is, is doing the right thing. He's made such an impact on our game. But, you know, I wouldn't sell Stanford too short. I think they had a good academic and golf reputation as well. Uh, and I just I really wanted to be a part of that. Um, so it was it was really awesome for that to be able to come true. Was it always your plan or your goal to stay in school for four years and get your degree while you were competing? Yeah, I would say I was maybe never good enough to think about leaving school too early. I, you know, really wanted to go to Stanford. I thought, yeah, finish out school. It was really fun going to school with my classmates and taking classes with them and doing all that. So I, yeah, I thought the four years at Stanford was great. And for me, there was no rush to turn pro necessarily. So I'm happy I stuck it out. So this would have been before the PJ Tour University system was implemented, Brandon. I want to get your take on that because you're a player who would have greatly benefited from that, staying in school for four years, earning your degree, earning All-America status uh, throughout your four years as well. It is a really tasty reward for young collegians and an enticement for them to stay in school, develop their games for four years, and offer a direct pathway, in the case of Ludwig Oberg last year, for instance, right to the PGA Tour. That's amazing. Yeah, I think it's been an unbelievable program just because I thought it was quite difficult turning pro. You know, you're not really guaranteed anything despite being um, a good college player and whatnot. Everyone kind of starts from zero once they turn professional. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's it's good. And I, I really like that stipulation of having to stay in school for four years because I think we should put good value on education and finishing school. And I think for these really good young players, there's no rush to turn pro. Like pro golf will always be there, but you're only in school for these few years. You can make lifelong friends and have all these memories from playing college golf uh, with your with your teammates. So I think it's good for them to stay. Very well said. What was your degree in, by the way? And it's something that uh, you feel you might be able to put to use someday. Yeah, so it was in the engineering school. The specific degree was called product design. I really liked it. I think a lot of my classes were sort of we would be presented with a problem and we'd have to design sort of a solution to solve that problem. We'd go out into the field, we'd talk to people about some of the issues they were having with certain products or certain experiences, and we'd kind of conjure up a solution. And I thought it was good because we're just really trying to think creatively, trying to problem solve. And I think those are good skills for any industry. Identifying a problem and finding a solution for it sounds like something you might do during the course of a five-hour round on the PGA Tour. Yeah, 100%. I think every week we're presented with a different challenge, and we're just trying to figure out what's what's the best way to solve this challenge. Of course, uh, you were not in person for your graduation from Stanford. You were a little busy competing at the U.S. Open at Pebble Beach back in 2019, but you were presented with your diploma when you walked off the 18th green. Can you tell me about the experience of all that? Yeah, that was honestly such a cool experience. Sunday, I was paired with Dustin Johnson, so I was quite excited to play uh, that day, the final round of the U.S. Open. And But, you know, I, I remember waking up and I was a little sad to miss out on graduation, uh, you know, knowing that my 
classmates and all my friends were lining up in the stadium and uh, getting ready to graduate. And I was kind of getting ready to play golf, I guess, which was exciting. But yeah, it was actually a total surprise. I didn't know that uh, that had been put together. And, uh, you know, so after I walked off the 18th green, thankfully, my family was already there uh, and they were able, USGA was able to pull off uh, a pseudo graduation for me. That's awesome. You talked about the unique experience of of college life, especially as a a scholar athlete. I suppose that applies to the Walker Cup as well, right? That's the height of amateur team competition, and you're on the victorious team at Royal Liverpool in 2019, Brandon. As I recall, you guys were down going into Sunday singles. You won eight of ten matches to win the Walker Cup. What a wild week it must have been. Yeah, I think that was you know another decision and kind of going along the lines of staying four years and being patient. I chose to remain as an amateur during the summer after I graduated, just hopefully to be able to play that Walker Cup. And um, it didn't disappoint. It's, it was so fun being over there with my teammates. And yeah, it's a, I think we hadn't won across the pond in a, a long time. So it was really nice to be able to play well in those Sunday singles. And uh, unfortunately, I was one of those two losing matches. <laughs> but uh, I did score three points early on. So at least I contributed. <laughs> I was not going to bring that out because you were three and one. You were a massive contributor uh, to that Nathaniel Crosby team uh, that year. And Isaiah Salinda was one of your teammates, college teammate as well. Your boy won by eight on the Corn Ferry Tour in Panama this year. Looks like he's going to be joining you on the PGA Tour next season, if not sooner, Brandon. For sure. I think it's great to see him play well. Um, he's got a ton of talent and he's a great player. And, you know, I think that's kind of shows without PGA Tour U, it sometimes can be tough to even break through on the professional golf scene. And, you know, I think for great players, eventually the good golf comes at a, the right time and they can make it. So I'm, I'm really happy to see him play well. So when you graduated from the Corn Ferry Tour, it was a weird scenario because it was at the height of the COVID pandemic, and there was no graduating class. So even though you had won the Corn Ferry Tour Championship, you had to wait essentially another full season to put your PGA Tour card to use. Um, what was it like going through that? Because that was a strange situation. Yeah, to be honest, I actually viewed that as a as kind of a good turnout, just because at the time that I had won the Tour Championship, I think I'd only played seven events on the Corn Ferry Tour, and I just felt like it wouldn't hurt to sort of develop for another season, just learn how to play three, four weeks in a row, learn how to travel, and sort of be a professional, you know, so I was grateful to have that extra time just to be able to learn how to be a professional golfer before I got, kind of got to the big show. Now you've competed in five major championships already, which is a pretty healthy taste for a young guy. The players as well. You finished 19th there last year at the stadium course. Looking forward to the rest of the Florida swing and getting another crack at uh, the Players' Championship in North Florida? Yeah, 100%. I think, you know, the Florida swing also presents very tough golf courses. So I think it's a it's a sort of a brutal stretch of golf for us. But it's, it's a like you said, a really nice challenge and uh, fun to sort of try and conquer those places. So I'm looking forward to it. All right, who are you playing with Thursday and Friday? What do your tee times look like? So I'm in the morning tomorrow, I think, just after 8 o'clock, and I'm paired with Michael Kim and Sam Stevens. So I think we'll have a good time. That'll be fun. I hope you keep it going. Folks can follow Brandon Wu on X. He's at bwu97, and he has been fabulous at the Mexico Open at Vedanta, finishing second and third the last two years. Go get him this week, Brandon. I appreciate chatting with you. Yep, thank you so much.